Hey, I'm live. Hey, everybody. I'm back. Sorry for the little uh, break there. We were filming uh, America's Test Kitchen, the TV show, season 20. Uh, but in the meantime, you guys have put up amazing comments and questions on three different videos. So I want to cover all those today. It's extra virgin olive oil, cauliflower, and egg yolks. So hit me up with questions about any of those or just life questions in general, you know, what's going on with you. Um, so let's get into this. And let's start with olive oil. So there were some awesome questions on that. First one was, can you cook with olive oil, like in the pan, sauteing? And I didn't really cover that too much, but that definitely falls under the umbrella of heat. And so we talked about heat being problematic in terms of um, preserving the, the flavor of extra virgin olive oil. So we've actually run some tests and found that even at relatively low temperatures, you know, talking about maybe 175 degrees or 200 degrees, which is low in a, in a saute, you do definitely lose um, some of that really fresh, grassy, amazing olive oil flavor. That said, uh, it doesn't turn bitter at that temperature. So if you only wanted to keep one oil on hand, extra virgin olive oil, you could absolutely use for sauteing. Um, I mean, in Italy, they use it for deep frying sometimes, and, and even then, it's nice. You're not going to get the same intense, you know, really, really beautiful grassy character. But if it's a less expensive olive oil, I, I wouldn't worry about doing that. Um, I think it, I think it's fine. Hi from New Jersey. Hi, welcome to Massachusetts. Um, all right, so that was a, that was the first one. Um, some people brought up that I didn't really get into air, so I talked about halt, heat, air, light, and time, um, and I didn't really mention um, air. There's not a ton to do there. You want to you know keep it in the bottle that's in, close that, uh, and and that's kind of your 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 best bet there. You wouldn't want to you know pour it into an open container and leave it open, but I don't think you'd probably do that anyway. So that's why I kind of just uh, glossed over that one. Cheers from Malaysia. Wow, you guys are coming from all over the place. Um, and someone's here in Back Bay, Boston. Awesome, cool. So um, hit me up with questions about olive oil, but those were the two that really stuck out to me. Uh, now, to cauliflower. And so I will say <laughs> there were some awesome comments on this. I think I converted some anti-cauliflower people, which is fantastic. I also know that I did not convert everyone. There were some people in there that said they, they don't care how cool the video was or um, or how beautiful it is. They're just not eating cauliflower. Totally respect that. Uh, but if you want to get into it, I think that soup is a great gateway for it. So I highly recommend that. Um, and then, so I, the, the, I think one of the funniest things was I asked what you saw when you looked at a head of cauliflower. And more than a few of you said that you saw um, a human brain, which I totally understand. There was just like a little bit dark. Someone even mentioned uh, an old Italian recipe where it was cooked in like tomato sauce and it looked like um, something from a lab. So you see some weird things in cauliflower. Um, great, so I wanted to get into uh, this really good question. Someone was asking about boiling it and it, to the point where it's bland, which you know is in like the 60 minute range. Could you do that and then still use it to thicken a soup? Would it still have that property? And the answer is yes. I've never thought about doing that, but it's a cool idea. Um, you know, if you didn't want cauliflower flavor, which is, you know, it can already be kind of mild. If you wanted to make it totally bland and then use it to thicken a soup, um, I think it would be a pretty like stealth ingredient and give you some really cool, um, really cool thickening, which would be awesome. So I thought that was really smart. Um, all right, now, so yeah, hit me up with, with questions about any of those. Uh, I want to get into egg yolks because there was a ton. Uh, or oh, someone says, could you d discuss boiling vegetables versus steaming vegetables? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually cauliflower is a, is a great one for that. So some of those colorful varieties I talked about, um, some of those compounds like the purple cauliflower with those anthocyanins, that, those are pretty water soluble compounds. So if you were to boil uh, purple cauliflower and you do it for too long, the water will actually turn uh, purple and you'll leach a lot of that out. So that kind of stuff is best sauteed. Just saute it with a, you know, a, a, little, bit of a, a little bit of water and the, and the lid on, which is steaming, um, you preserve that color. So that would work. The orange cauliflower with those carotenoid pigments, those are a lot more stable, so you can, you can boil that. But in general, boiling um, you know, is usually a little bit quicker than steaming, but it definitely leaches things out of the food. That can be a good thing if you're working with a really bitter food, like some bitter greens. But if you're trying to keep everything in there, steaming is often a, a better way to go. Good question. Uh, okay, so egg yolks. This one, um, really a ton of comments. Most people are were minds blown by the grating of egg yolks, which I was too when we first started working on that. I think it was one of the coolest recipes. 
there was a lot of questions around whether it's difficult to do, and it really just takes time. Um, it's a really pretty simple thing of, um, it's a 50-50 ratio of kosher salt and sugar. Uh, it takes about seven days to get them cured all the way through. It's kind of a slow process. Um, and then it's really, you know, rinsing them off and then drying them out in the oven. So um, yeah, it's just time. Uh, you wanna make sure you, you know, separate your yolks really carefully and you can remove those, the little chalice, those little white um, things that attach it to the, uh, to the white itself. Getting rid of those makes it a, a, a little bit prettier. But yeah, not hard. I would totally recommend doing it. Um, question from Luke Butler, do you keep your eggs in the fridge or room temp? So um, in America, eggs, uh, during the, the processing are washed of this waxy cuticle that's on the outside of the egg. So if you're in Europe, uh, a lot of times you'll see eggs out at room temperature. They haven't been treated that way, so that waxy cuticle helps um, keep air transfer from happening and actually keeps the eggs preserved uh, a lot longer. So in the States, absolutely refrigerate them. That's been removed and they'll last a lot longer in the fridge. So they're very, very perishable uh, at that point. So pop them in the fridge. Um, Been a fan of the show for 10 years. Awesome. Thanks for thanks for watching. I think there's a show going on in the background right there, even. Uh, okay, so egg yolk questions that I got on here. Um, how important is it to use kosher salt? This is for the curing process. Kosher salt versus table salt. Um, you could use either, uh, you know, kosher salt is, it has, when you measure it by volume, um, you end up using a lot more of it because it doesn't pack as densely into a measuring cup. So you would want to use half as much table salt um, that bulk, that bulkiness of kosher salt is really nice because it means you can, you know, basically you know, use less salt and, and get as much uh, material as you need in order to cover everything. So I would probably stick with kosher salt, uh, but you could make it work with table salt. Um, I don't, I, I missed that other comment. There was something about sounding rude but not meaning to. Um, all right, next one here is. So I thought this one was really funny. Um, this person said, "I usually don't come on and comment on these things to complain." Um, but um, sh this person was not happy that I left out black soldier fly larvae as one of the best feeds for getting a really uh, deep color yolk. And so I love learning stuff and I did not know that. So black soldier fly larvae, great for getting the yellow yolks and I, I wanna try that out now. So thanks for coming on and complaining, that was a good one. Um, there was a question about making the mayonnaise and why I didn't use olive oil for that. So that's olive oil and yolks in one question. It's great. So um, if you want to use extra virgin olive oil for the flavor in mayonnaise, you can. Uh, the problem is if you have it in the blender, when you blend up extra virgin olive oil, you can actually make it really bitter. So um, ideally, you're making it with vegetable oil. But you can make it with a smaller amount of vegetable oil and then at the end whisk in some extra virgin olive oil for flavor. And we have some recipes on cooksillustrated.com um, that do just that. Uh, so you get the flavor but without creating that bitterness. So that would be my recommendation there. Um, there was one question there about um, Himalayan salt and regular salt, and I think it was whether they um, taste the same. So a lot of these kind of more exotic salts, Himalayan salts and um, you know the Hawaiian black ones, they're salt and they have another ingredient in there um, that contributes to the color. And so for the Himalayan pink salt, um, you know, there's often clays in there that add, add that color. If you actually whisk that into water and dissolve it, you'll see that the clay will separate out. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but you know, the flavor that you're adding is, is clay or and whatever that is and the beautiful color. Um, for the most part, we tend to say that, you know, you stick with, um, you know, kosher salt is great for general cooking and so is table salt. And when you're looking at sea salts and specialty salts, you're really more focused on texture than flavor. Uh, most of them are really close to, you know, pure sodium chloride with just trace amounts of other minerals. And, um, and that's not contrib contributing a ton of different flavor. So some of them have, you know, a little bit different flavor, but the texture really is the big thing. So Malden, Florida Cell, those really crunchy crystals. That's what we love for, to use as finishing salts. Um, bum, 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 bum. I was wondering about how to use turmeric. Uh, that's a whole other video, but that's a good idea. Thank you. Um, what's the most common misconception you hear about food science? Um, I think the biggest thing about food science is that um, some people think that it's kind of used for evil. Um, so I hope with like what we do at Cooks Illustrated and um, and what we're doing in the series is to explain that like science is happening all in your food and yes, you can use that knowledge to create some, some evil thing in the lab if you want to, but for the most part, it's just gonna help you be uh, a better cook. Um, so I just saw a comment about avocado and I did want to get into that. So 
Um, I made a, a, a just a little jab, a little joke about avocado toast in the yolk video, and I saw people on both sides of that debate. Um, and I'm just teasing. I I, I love avocado toast too, um, but I love when things get a little trendy to poke just a little bit. Um, next question. Um, this was just a shout out. Someone said shout out to chickens on the egg yolk video. Um, I should have shouted out to chickens. They're responsible for everything there. Um, and then there was another question about can you do without the sugar in the cure for the yolks? I would caution against doing that. The sugar um, is really interesting. It, it, it pulls water out of the yolks in a similar fashion to salt. It's not as effective, but it, it, it does help in that curing process. And by using half salt and half sugar, you get something that isn't too salty. So those things are, are pretty heavily seasoned, but if you were to use all salt and you waited you know, long enough to pull out the water, uh, my fear would be that it'd be too salty. Um, all right, so that was all the questions I have on there. Let me see. Do you ever cook with ghee? Um, that's a great question. Yes, absolutely. Um, we just worked on a, a really great doll recipe that's coming up in the magazine that um, that uses ghee in it. I, th I think it's an awesome product. It's um, a little toasty, you know, in the vein of brown butter, but you can also heat it really high because those those solids have been removed. So ghee's an awesome thing to have around. Uh, what's my opinion on MSG? Um, I love MSG. All of the kind of hysterics around it causing all these problems have been pretty solidly debunked at this point and um, that's a ton of meatiness with just one ingredient that you can keep on hand is really stable. Um, I love MSG in kind of all of its forms and it, it plays a big role in um, in good cooking. Yay for MSG. Awesome. So uh, thank you guys. I'm, uh, I really appreciate all the comments on the video and all the questions. Um, the next one coming up, I'm really, really pumped about. So stay tuned. That's going to be in a couple of weeks. And um, stay tuned. Thanks, guys.